Ever since I can remember, I've been known as the quiet girl. And my parents tell me this wasn't always the case. At some point, I was able to blow kisses at strangers without abandon. But ever since I've known myself, I've been incredibly shy. And a lot of my childhood was actually spent hiding behind the pant legs of my parents. But as time grew on, the shyness evolved into a crippling fear of confrontation to the point that I would tell myself or tell other people that I'm non-political, that I would refuse to participate in controversial discussions or take sides because I just never felt knowledgeable or qualified enough to do so. So I just decided to step out of it altogether. And this got worse because as I, around 10 years old, I decided I wasn't gonna watch the news at all. Growing up in Chicago, whenever I turned it on, I would hear about everything from Chirac to the Iraq war. And at that point, I decided it was just best for my mental health to cut it off altogether. Um, and then in high school, I was probably a little bit more self-absorbed than many other teenagers because I went to a boarding school. And it was just so much easier to not hear about anything going on in the outside world to the point that this phenomenon was actually called the IMSA bubble. Um, but eventually, I did graduate. Um, I came here to Arizona, Arizona State University. Woo. Um, but <laughs> uh, I realized that I actually was in a very, different uh, a very different political environment than what I was used to. And I swore to myself that I would end up being even more guarded for the fear of rejection um, here at the university. But there are exceptions. Um, and I met a friend through one of my classes and we ended up hanging out um, as college students do at like 3 a.m. in the college dorms. Um, and in our half asleep, half awake days, I really don't know how we got here, but we somehow stumbled on Obamacare. Um, and I don't even know or remember what he said, but at some point I was just like, you know, like Obamacare is cool, right? Like healthcare is always nice. But he just turned to me with anger in his eyes and his words stung as he said, shut the fuck up. You don't know what you're talking about. And there was just silence and shock. And my mind was suddenly racing but frozen. I couldn't form words in my mouth. My tongue went limp. I couldn't think about anything except that he was right. He was absolutely right. I'd spent the last decade or more cutting myself off from the outside world, convinced that it was so much easier for myself and everyone else if I just didn't participate, if I didn't take a side, if I decided that I just stepped out of it all. Because why did my voice matter? It didn't matter. So why should I risk offending other people? But I realized then that by not making a decision, I had made one. I had effectively cut out my own voice box and metaphorically handed it to the next person and said, here, do whatever you want with it. And that's absolutely crazy. And I realized a few other things along the way. Number one, that being informed doesn't have to come at the expense of my mental health. That we live in a 24-7 news cycle and everything has to come in moderation. But honestly, that's not an excuse for being uninformed completely. And I also realized that being informed didn't have to come at the expense of my relationships either. That even though I revel in the similarities that I have with my friends, I've actually grown much closer and learned so much more through our differences. And then finally, I realized that as the child of two immigrants, that my freedom of speech is a privilege and a right that not too many other people get to enjoy. And by not taking advantage of it, I was actually really taking it for granted. And so, thinking back on this entire situation, um, the irony here really is that when he told me to shut the fuck up, I decided to find my voice instead. So, I stand before you today, really extremely lucky to say that I am the student director for Changemaker Central Tempe. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but one of the greatest things is that one of our pillars is civic engagement. But even though that's one of our pillars, I am still constantly learning and growing about what that means to me as an individual. For one thing, I am now no longer afraid to participate in conversations that I would have otherwise felt unqualified or uncomfortable in. That I don't have to be a politician to know what po politics are like. Or that I don't have to be an economist to know what I want out of our economy. And I've also realized that I should not only just speak about that within our day-to-day -day conversations, but that I have to bring that to the polls. Because while I'm talking about my beliefs right here with you now, I want to make sure our local representatives are doing the same on Capitol Hill. And lastly, 
I want to make sure that I'm using my platform and my voice to advocate for others too. Because whether you agree with me or not, your voice is just as important as mine. Your right to speech is just as important as mine. And I want to make sure you believe that too. So I leave you with this. If anyone, whether it's the voice in your head, a family member, a friend, is telling you that your voice doesn't matter, please tell them to shut the fuck up.